Welcome to Once Human, the number 11 most wishlisted game on Steam right now. A multiplayer open world survival game in which players can battle creatures or each other, build and defend shared territories, indulge in OTT combat, or just chill with friends at their base. Ahead of its final closed beta test, which starts April 3rd, and its planned Q3 2024 launch, the development team at Starry Studio gave me a private glimpse at what's to come. Once Humans Monsters are a fantastical nightmare of Lovecraftian creature design. Organic machine hybrids mutated by an outbreak of cosmic energy called Stardust, with weird and wonderful forms that can be dangerous or useful. This bus with legs is the latter. You can ride the bus for safe passage, with scheduled routes along bus stops throughout the Nalcott continent's massive open world map. When it arrives, it might already have a contingent of deviant baddies riding it, whom you have to quickly kill before clambering aboard, presenting an element of risk and reward. The walking bus encounter is weird, fun and densely constructed, itself a microcosm of what to expect from a game that lets players do pretty much anything. While Once Human has a story and a path of main missions, you can ignore these completely and play at your own pace. The upcoming CBT will welcome up to 150,000 participants, with a new server added in Europe to improve the experience for players in that part of the world. And among its many features, one new element will be the ability to harness the power of deviants. Deviants are the mutated monsters that stalk the open world, from humanoid creatures with spotlights for a head to towering terrors, and defeating them allows players to collect deviant powers to use in battle. Once Human will feature some 40 types of deviations, companions you capture that can be put to work in your home base. Some types may aid you in combat as backup warriors, while others will work the land in your farm. Others still can add an element of fun or weirdness to your camp. For example, in my demo, I was shown one of the game's new social events, a deviant music festival. A horde of mutants were blissfully worshipping haunted disco balls that hung in the air, and by getting a group of around 10 friends or randoms together, players could solve a series of environmental puzzles by using a combination of combat and specific dance emotes to clear out the enemies and capture the deviation disco balls. Once in your possession, you can place disco balls in your camp to increase the happiness levels of the other deviations there, evolving their abilities. This mix of player cooperation, lateral puzzles and persistent and non-persistent events seems to be typical of Once Human's highly social gameplay. Each server will have a maximum capacity of 4,000 to 5,000 players, which is a lot. Each of these will be divided into six different worlds which you can switch between with your friends. We really want the game to be for almost everyone, so we have PvE combat for people who want to defeat monsters, and PvP areas for those who want to battle other players, says Peng, Victoria's son, Once Human's world and content designer. We also have a huge map for architects, so if you want to come construct a huge and fantastic base, you can always find your own space, along with your own safe island on the edge of the open world where you can build whatever you want and nobody can destroy it, she says. You can play alone of course, but there is safety in numbers and Once Human offers multiple options for cooperative multiplayer action. When you want to go on a raid or a dungeon, you can put together a team of up to four players. You can invite your friends or use the matching system to build a team with people you don't know, explains Sun. We also have a hive system, which allows you to build a team of four people and build a base together to share your resources, which is more closely united. Sun continues, and then we have Warbands, which is much bigger, up to 40 people to start with, but you can upgrade it to up to 80 people. A Warband is a closely united group of players and you can fight against other players or mine for resources together, competing against other Warbands to control better mining areas around the map. And make no mistake, the Nalcott Continent's map is huge. You start with a small area to explore, and you can venture outside of this and unlock new areas at your leisure. However, you may find yourself quickly overpowered by deviants or players in higher level areas, so unless you really crave that extra challenge, it's better to fully clear the first area and level up before wandering too far. That said, you will definitely want to explore. The scenery is utterly gorgeous, both in terms of design and graphical fidelity. Rolling vistas draw the eye far into the distance, while the rural area I explored is populated with verdant sunlit mountains and placid lakes that draw a variety of fauna, from cute bounding bunnies to majestic deer to leathery crocodiles. You can chop trees for wood or hunt wildlife for meat, with a rich natural world to plunder and enemy encounters galore. You can always spawn a motorbike to cover ground more quickly, including steep hills and rough terrain. Elsewhere in the game, you can even turn your camp into a wheeled RV, taking the whole base on the move. I only got to try a little bit of PvE combat, but I was impressed by the variety on offer. Guns feel responsive, while melee attacks feel punchy and visceral. 
The aforementioned spotlight headed deviants can freeze you with their light beams, but defeating them allows you to pick up the spotlight unit and wield it against other enemies, freezing them in their tracks for a follow up attack. And while I mainly face low level enemies, getting mobbed by too many of them proved fatal, suggesting that the game will offer a decent challenge. There are of course boss battles and other surprises. As I approached a loot chest placed in a conspicuously open spot in front of a large digital billboard, I soon realised it was bait as a huge monster burst out of the screen. I could have stood my ground to try to defeat it and claim the loot, but well, my character was still only level 1 and running away is always a decent option. Want to level up? You'll have to play for it because you can't pay for it. Once Human is a free to play game, but Derek Q, the head of overseas operation, explains that the business model will be refreshingly non-predatory. There are no pay to win elements at all, so the monetization system is all based on cosmetics, he says. You can purchase decorations for your home, vehicle skins, gun skins and cosmetics that are purely based on appearance. Once Human's strongest weapon is its densely packed open world, which sets the stage for a wide variety of roleplay as players create their own fun. Starry Studio are highly prioritizing fan feedback, learning from their players' excursions and leaning into the craziness. If it sounds like a lot, it is a lot. Once Human's promises seem almost too good to be true, but each CBT seems to deliver with a growing community of enthusiastic fans. Time will tell whether Once Human can keep players invested for the weeks, months and years it will need to in order to become a mainstay in the survival game market, but my short time with the game left me intensely curious to explore in more detail. As someone who loves open world games and freaky creature design, I can't wait to see how weird things get once things get weird. For more less than ordinary game stuff, keep it locked on IGN.